Good evening. Our guest is Irene Spencer. Irene is the author of Shattered Dreams, a New York Times best-selling book. She is also the author of Cult Insanity. My voice is the voice from behind the camera. Please join us in our interview with Irene Spencer. I was the 13th of my father's 31 children, and that's all we ever knew was polygamy. We lived a very sheltered life, as had done my ancestors. My, I am fifth generation polygamy. Ever since Joseph Smith, the founder of the Mormon Church, started polygamy, uh, my family jumped on the bandwagon and started gathering wives. We grew up believing that if we did not live polygamy, that we would go straight to hell. There was no, uh, no choice other than to do it or be destroyed. Therefore, we all looked forward to marrying a man and helping him accumulate his seven wives that he could be found worthy to become a god. We believed that the men would become gods and go to their own planet where they would own that planet. They would take their wives and children with them. Therefore, it was very important that we select a man that was going to live this law. My mother had been a second wife, as had my grandmother. So I followed in their footsteps and I too became a second wife. I married Verlin LeBaron, uh, who was my half-sister's husband. My mother had married her half-sister's husband, and this was something that they did often in these polygamist uh, um, uh, marriages. So when I was 16, I uh, married, and two weeks after I got married, they had the raids in Colorado City, Arizona. Governor Pyle uh, raided all the polygamists, trying to eradicate uh, this lifestyle. And uh, out of fear, we fled to Mexico, where my husband had been raised and where he lived. Uh, <clears throat> we didn't want to uh, be caught up in uh, being arrested, and it was a very real thing to us, because in 1944, I was a child of the raids. Uh, my father was uh, actually arrested. He spent almost two and a half years in Utah State Prison, and his crime was polygamy. We lived in secret. We tried to hide. But how do you hide when you have 31 children and you live around neighbors that have six and seven wives and they have 30 or 40 children? But we were sheltered. We tried to stay away from the outside society and to keep ourselves uh, away from them so that we wouldn't be taken down by the devil. Mostly they didn't want us to have any knowledge because ignorance is what keeps people trapped. People say, did you love polygamy, Irene? I said, no, I didn't love it. I had a love for God and I wanted to serve Him. I wanted to do what was right. <clears throat> and I figured that if that was a requirement, then I would go ahead and I would uh, live uh, plural marriage. The women at the time that they are married are told that they shouldn't let a year go by without seeing that a child isn't born into this covenant. Therefore, uh, the average polygamist woman has, uh, an, well, she has an average of 12 children. I know many women that have had 16 and 18. My best girlfriend had 21 single births. Other people that I know had 18 and 19 children. Therefore, you can see that when the young girls are married, uh, usually when they're married at 14 and 15 years old, people say, well, why did they marry him so young? Well, we were taught that Christ, uh, his mother Mary, had him when she was 14 years old. And uh, we needed to have all the children that we could, so we got married young also. But one of the main reasons that they told us is that a man could marry you and he could mold you. He could make you into what he wanted you to be. Of course, he thought he was going to make you into a goddess to go to his kingdom and be in his world. But what they were actually doing was eradicating your identity. Uh, you had to be obedient. You had to do what they told you to do. And somehow, in the shuffle of life, you end up losing yourselves. Little girls not only got married early, but they started having babies when they were 15, 16 years old. 
I myself had 13 children by the time that I was 34 years old. Um, my children, as many other children, were tending babies instead of playing with dolls. They were changing babies at three and four years old and bouncing them on their knees because I was so overwhelmed with all my own children and with the poverty that we had to live in and with the unhappiness of living with other wives. Therefore, uh, the children had to mix bread and I believe in children helping out and being responsible, but they took on the great loads of actually being little mothers and helping raise these families. Also, most women were not educated. They were taken out of school, they were married at young ages because they didn't want them to learn the ways of the world. We were sheltered to the fact that we could only read Mormon books, The Doctrine and Covenants, The Book of Mormon, Pearl of Great Price, and a few books that had been written by the early leaders. I was told that Heber C. Kimball, who was one of the Twelve Apostles in the early Mormon Church, had 45 wives. They would hold him up as an example and want him to be a mentor to us that we would not flinch when we just had to collect seven for our husband, but to say, look at this wonderful man, had 45 wives. Um, many of the young boys also, it was really sad, went out when they were 14 and 15 years old and they gave up their childhoods. Why? Because they were required to go out and work that they might help support their fathers and give them enough money that they could marry more and younger wives. Life was very hard because of the poverty. We grew up thinking that we didn't value the suffering that we went through we wore like a badge because they told us that those that suffered the most were going to receive the greatest reward. So I saw my mother and other plural wives just enduring every day the depression, the heartache, and you just grow up and thinking, well, we're God's righteous people and this is a requirement. So we go ahead and, and make the very best of it. Can you imagine moving in with your uh, sister and her husband? into a little three-room house, I actually felt like I was an intruder. I felt like it really wasn't any part of uh, it, me, you know, I didn't had, really wasn't able to bond. I wasn't able to show any affection or anything in front of my husband. In fact, uh, when I got married, my sister attended my um, wedding, as all wives do. The 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 wife will take the hand of the next wife and give her to him in a sense. And you say yes, and then you take her hand and place it in his hand and give her to him. And therefore, you can never complain. When you feel bad or you have jealousies, they'll say, Why, you gave her to me. Why are you feeling so bad? You gave her to me. We were told that by living together and by having all these wives, that we would overcome our... Uh, rough spots and our jealousies and our uh, 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 bad, you know, our bad negative traits. But I want you to know that uh, I was a very jealous woman. I wept many a night when my husband was in sleeping with another woman in the same house that I was living in. I felt that I wasn't valued. I felt that I didn't have my needs met. Um, <clears throat> I felt that I should just... Uh, go and be obedient, but it led to an existence of despair, or just an existence of denial. You can't be a good mother when you're just trying to cope and trying to get a little crumb of love yourself. Many of the people in Salt Lake and these places when they raided the, had the raids, moved out onto farms and tried to live out in the country to get away so that they wouldn't be where the government could keep such a close eye on them. Most people don't know it, but today there's an estimated between 50 and even maybe 80, 100,000 practicing polygamists in the western United States and Canada and Mexico. <laughs> I know because most of them are my relatives. I have relatives in almost every group. There's uh, 15 or more that I know of, of fundamentalist groups throughout the uh, United States, Mexico and Canada. And uh, I have sisters, cousins, 
uh, that are all married into these uh, different groups. They all have different leaders. They claim a prophet generally in each group, and the, and the women can marry in another group, and most of them don't end up ever seeing their uh, seeing their family again. Our parents lied as who to our parents were. On my own birth certificate, I did not have my father's name. I did not know this till years later. And I found out that many of my brothers and sisters did not have my father's name, or sometimes even my our mother's name on the birth certificate. We were told that we could lie as long as we were lying for God, and we were superseding the, his laws and going to live them. We were told to keep the laws of the land, but if uh, it meant breaking them because we were living God's uh, laws, then we were justified. Many, many, <clears throat> many, many uh, polygamous children grew up in such isolation that they didn't know how to cope with the outside world. We were told that the outside world was wicked. We were told that they would destroy us that the devil would get us. Therefore, we lived in constant fear. I know people wonder today uh, how they say, why can't these women just get out of this? Aren't they smart enough to just get out? Well, I want to ask you, if you had no job skills, you had no education, and you were the men made the rules, and you were told that you could leave any time you wanted, walk out that door, that you had to go with the clothes on your back and you had to leave a dozen or more little children. Would you be willing to walk out? Those children were the only thing that kept you going and kept you some sense of happiness and, and, uh, and joy was holding those little babies and those little children. And no woman in her right mind would get up and decide that she's going to walk out and leave her children. Most women don't even have access, didn't in my time, didn't have access to automobiles. I myself didn't even get a driver's license until I was 40 years old. I was actually afraid when I went out into the outside world to even go into a store and change a $5 bill. I was literally petrified thinking that I had polygamy written across my face and people would know who I was and they were going to be out there to destroy me. I lived for 28 years in a polygamous marriage, and my husband took on many other wives. <clears throat> Even when he got to the seventh wife, he didn't quit. He ended up marrying 10 women, and I was the second of those 10 wives. I had 14 of my husband's 58 children. He had 29 girls and 29 boys, and it was really a large family that he could not support. And we grew gardens, had milk from our cows. We uh, mostly lived on beans and rice and old secondhand clothes. In those days, we had no garage sales, no way to get anything nice, but we actually lived in poverty. I lived many years without electricity, without any uh, plumbing inside bathrooms or anything. And my own children, were taken out of school. My oldest daughter was taken out when she was in the sixth grade because her father felt that she needed to stay home and help me raise the children. No one will know the heartache that you go through when you're so bound by fear. It's like you're imprisoned and you are imprisoned and you don't realize that you hold the key to your uh, freedom. In the meantime, you just try to be obedient, try to not uh, talk about the brethren. You live in denial. People ask you how you like it, and you say, oh, it's wonderful. We just are such a big, happy family. And yet, you can look at the faces of all these women, and it speaks volumes. More than any words could ever tell you, just look at their countenances and see the, the light that has gone out in their eyes. Irene, would you tell us, is there a blood covenant also that keeps these women there besides their alleged freedom to leave and leave their children? Well, we were taught... Uh, uh, principle called blood atonement and if uh, a man can marry as many wives as he wants to but if a woman